Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel Hot News. In this video, we'll be highlighting American celebrities who have passed away today and in the last few days, along with other notable figures from around the world. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like, it means a lot to us. Thank you. And now let's begin. One. One. Nicholas Pryor, the talented character actor best known for playing Tom Cruise's father in Risky Business and Kathleen Robertson's dad in Beverly Hills, 90210, has passed away at 89. His wife, actress Christine Belford, confirmed he died from cancer at home in Wilmington, North Carolina. Pryor's career spanned nearly 70 years, and he was incredibly grateful to have been a working actor for so long. His journey included standout roles in daytime soaps like General Hospital spin-off Port Charles, All My Children, and Another World. On primetime television, he was Chancellor Milton Arnold in Beverly Hills, 90210, and the father of Kirsten Bennett in Party of Five. Pryor also portrayed Vice Principal Jack Feldspar in NBC's The Bronx Zoo. His big screen roles included unforgettable performances as Robert Downey Jr.'s father in Less Than Zero, Tom Cruise's Porsche wrecking dad in Risky Business, and key parts in Damien, Omen 2, The Gumball Rally, and Airplane. With over 170 acting credits, he made guest appearances in classic shows like M.A.S.H., Little House on the Prairie, St. Elsewhere, The West Wing, and NYPD Blue. Born Nicholas David Probst in Baltimore in 1935, Pryor began honing his craft in theaters and went on to study at Yale University. He appeared in multiple Broadway productions and started his soap opera career in the late 1950s. Pryor's film and TV roles kept audiences captivated for decades, and his impact on Hollywood is undeniable. He is survived by his wife, Christine Belford, his daughter Stacy, and his grandchildren Auguste and Averill. Nicholas Pryor's legacy will continue through the incredible characters he brought to life on screen, leaving behind an unforgettable mark on entertainment history. Two. Nigeria makes me look different, so it is something that everyone can see, and I saw too. Nigeria helped me to understand what I want to do in my life. I wouldn't change the world in my little way. Sammy Basso, the world's longest living survivor of progeria, has passed away at the age of 28. The news was shared by the Italian Progeria Association, which Basso co-founded with his parents. Progeria, or Hutchinson-Guilford Progeria Syndrome, is a rare genetic condition that causes rapid aging in children. Most individuals with progeria live an average of 14.5 years, but Sammy defied the odds, inspiring many with his incredible spirit and determination. Born in Shio, Italy, Sammy was diagnosed with progeria at just two years old. Despite the challenges of the disease, he dedicated his life to raising awareness and advancing research. He made numerous television appearances and starred in a National Geographic documentary titled Sammy's Journey, which followed his travels along Route 66 with his parents and best friend Ricardo. Sammy also served as an international ambassador for the Progeria Research Foundation, PRF, and became a key figure in the global fight against the disease. Basso's passion for science led him to graduate from the University of Padua, where he studied his own condition, contributing to important research on progeria. Audrey Gordon, executive director of PRF, shared, Sammy was a dear friend and inspiration since we met over 20 years ago. He became a scientist to help find a cure for progeria and was a key member of PRF's gene editing team. His optimism, kindness, and brilliance touched the world. Sammy's legacy continues through the work of PRF and the fight for a cure. His life was a testament to resilience and hope as he worked tirelessly to help others with the same condition. Though progeria is always fatal, and death often results from heart attacks or strokes, Sammy's journey has left a lasting impact on the world. He will be remembered not just for his advocacy, but for his unwavering spirit and determination to make a difference. Three. A guy who reads way too many comic books and knows way too much about comic books, and I narratively read comic books to you in a dramatic fashion. Ben Potter, the beloved YouTube star known as Comic Storian, has tragically passed away at the age of 40. His wife, Nathalie, confirmed the heartbreaking news, revealing that Ben died in an unfortunate accident. As the creator behind Comic Storian, 
Ben captivated over 3 million subscribers with his audio dramas and insightful discussions on the Marvel and DC universes, cementing his place as a significant voice in the comic book community. Nathalie took to X, formerly Twitter, to share her grief and pay tribute to her late husband. To many of you, he was comic storian, but to us, he was everything. He was loving, genuine, and always there for his loved ones, she wrote. Though no details of the accident were shared, Nathalie spoke of Ben's irreplaceable presence in their lives, calling him our rock and expressing how much he meant to everyone who knew him. Ben's channel, Comic Storian, was his passion project, where he spent over a decade sharing his love for exciting stories and characters with his audience. Nathalie expressed her intention to honor his legacy, saying, His channel was one of his greatest accomplishments, and we want to keep that going. Ben would want the storytelling to continue, and we plan to do just that in his memory. The tragic news has shaken the online community, with tributes pouring in from fans and fellow creators alike. O'Shea Jackson Jr., son of Ice Cube, returned to X from a personal break to honor Ben, saying, Rest in peace to comic storian. I'm heartbroken. Thank you for your work, man. I was a huge fan. Comic book author Scott Snyder also expressed his condolences sharing that Ben's infectious love for comics had a profound impact on those around him. Ben's final YouTube upload, titled Why DC's Reboots Beat Marvel, was posted just a day before his untimely passing. With nearly 4,000 videos to his name, his contributions to the comic book world will continue to resonate. His wife, Nathalie, asks for privacy during this difficult time as she and their family focus on preserving everything Ben built. His memory will live on through the stories he loved and the community he inspired. Four. Four. Johnny Neal, the talented songwriter and former member of both the Allman Brothers Band and the Dickie Betts Band, has passed away at the age of 70. His death was confirmed by his former bandmate, Warren Haynes who paid tribute to Neil in an emotional social media post. While the cause of death has not been revealed, Haynes described Neil as not only a brilliant musician, but also one of the funniest and most memorable characters in the music world. Haynes shared that Johnny Neil's stories were legendary, noting how Neil always had music in his head and an endless stream of creative ideas, whether on stage, in the studio, or while songwriting. His ability to draw from so many musical styles and genres was amazing, and his gift for improvisation was unmatched, Haynes wrote, adding, We wrote a lot of music, played a lot of music, and traveled the world together. Johnny's music and his legend will live on forever. Born on June 11, 1954, in Wilmington, Delaware, Neil joined the Allman Brothers Band in 1989 as a keyboardist and harmonica player. He made his mark on the band's 1990 album Seven Turns, co-writing four songs, including the hit single Good Clean Fun. His songwriting talent extended to the group's final album, Hitting the Note, 2003, where he co-wrote Maydell. Neil's contributions to the world of Southern rock and blues are undeniable, blending his exceptional musical skills with a distinct ability to improvise and craft timeless songs. Though he suffered a stroke in 2019, Neil made a remarkable recovery and returned to performing, continuing to share his passion for music with fans until his passing. His legacy as a gifted musician and a cherished member of the Allman Brothers family will be remembered for years to come. Five. Une chanson qui s'appelle Tous les garçons et les filles. Françoise Hardy, the iconic French singer, actress, and model, has passed away at the age of 80 in Paris after battling laryngeal cancer. Known for her introspective ballads, Hardy became a star in the 1960s and was a leading figure in the Ye Ye movement, a French pop music phenomenon. Born in Paris, Hardy discovered her passion for music early on, inspired after receiving a guitar as a gift from her father. Although she initially studied at the Paris Institute of Political Studies, her love for music led her to shift focus and pursue a career in entertainment. Her rise to fame came in 1962 with the release of her debut EP, which featured the song Tous les garçons les filles, 
The ballad dominated the French charts, staying at number one for 15 weeks and selling over 2 million copies. It became an anthem of its era and solidified Hardy's place in the music scene. Throughout the 1960s, Hardy's popularity soared not only in France, but across Europe and beyond, with hits like Le Premier Bonheur du Jour, Mon Ami La Rose, and La Question. Her influence extended well into the 2000s, with later albums such as Tante de Belle Shows 2004 and L'Amour Fou 2012 earning critical praise. Beyond her music, Hardy was also a celebrated actress and fashion icon. She appeared in films like Grand Prix 1966 and What's New Pussycat 1965 and worked with designers like André Courage and Paco Rabanne. Hardy's chic style graced magazine covers and made her a fashion muse of the 1960s. In 1981, Hardy married fellow French musician Jacques Dutronc, and together they had one son, Thomas Dutronc, a talented musician in his own right. Hardy's life was marked by a long battle with malt lymphoma, a journey she fought for over 20 years. In her later years, she became an advocate for the legalization of physician-assisted suicide in France, bringing attention to the issue after her own health challenges. Francoise Hardy leaves behind a legacy of timeless music, unforgettable performances, and an indelible influence on fashion and culture. Her work will continue to inspire generations to come. Six. Sissy Houston, the legendary gospel singer and mother of Whitney Houston, has passed away at the age of 91. Her daughter-in-law, Pat Houston, confirmed that Sissy died peacefully at her home in New Jersey while under hospice care for Alzheimer's disease. Known as a matriarch of the Houston family, Sissy's impact on music and her community spanned over seven decades. Pat Houston shared the family's grief in a statement saying, we have lost the matriarch of our family. Mother Sissy was a strong and towering figure in our lives. Her deep faith, commitment to family, and contributions to music will remain forever in our hearts. She also expressed gratitude for Sissy's life, noting the valuable lessons she imparted. Sissy began her music career in 1938, singing with her siblings in the group Drinkard Four. She later co-founded The Sweet Inspirations, a group that provided backing vocals for iconic artists like Otis Redding, Elvis Presley, and Jimi Hendrix. Sissy's own solo career took off in 1963 with her first solo record, This Is My Vow. Her debut LP, presenting Sissy Houston in 1970 included hit tracks like Be My Baby and I'll Be There. Over her career, Sissy won two Grammy Awards for her powerful gospel performances and left a lasting mark on music history. She passed on her incredible vocal talent to her daughter Whitney, who followed in her footsteps, becoming one of the greatest singers of all time. In 1987, Sissy recorded a duet with Whitney titled I Know Him So Well a testament to their close bond through music. Sissy's life was marked by great joys and deep sorrows. She candidly wrote about her daughter Whitney's struggles with addiction in her 2013 memoir, Remembering Whitney, sharing her heartbreak over Whitney's tragic death in 2012. Despite the pain, Sissy remained a pillar of strength for her family, including her six grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Sissy's legacy will forever live on through her music, her faith, and the generations of singers she influenced. She will be remembered not only as a vocal powerhouse, but as a loving mother, grandmother, and inspiration to countless people worldwide. Seven. Seven. I try to do the best I can for you. R&B singer Angela Bofill, known for her soulful hits like this Time I'll Be Sweeter, I Try, an Angel of the Night, has passed away at the age of 70. Her passing was confirmed by her family, with the news shared in a heartfelt message posted to her personal Facebook page. The initial post, signed by her close friend and manager Rich Engel, expressed sadness over her passing and provided details of her upcoming funeral. A follow-up message further clarified the news, thanking friends and fans for their early condolences including tributes from fellow performers Melba Moore and Mesa. Bofill's career began in her teens, and her debut album Angie in 1978 made her a standout in the R&B world, with hits that continue to resonate today. Her unique voice, capable of hitting both low notes and high Cs with perfect pitch, 
set her apart from others in the industry. She quickly became a fan favorite with tracks like Something About You, Let Me Be The One, and I'm On Your Side. Despite suffering two strokes in 2006 and 2007, Bofol maintained an optimistic outlook on life. In a 2020 interview with Essence magazine, she even laughed off rumors of her death that circulated at the time. She expressed her gratitude for the love she received from fans, saying, you always must welcome love. Her sense of humor and resilience remained strong, despite the health struggles that affected her ability to sing. In 2011, after taking time off to focus on her health, Bofill told the Denver Post she was thrilled to be performing again, even if her voice wasn't what it once was. I need crowd, in the blood, entertain, she said. Though her voice had changed, her love for the stage and the connection with her fans endured. Reflecting on her stroke, she remained lighthearted, saying, But my voice no sing. I rather not sing. Awful. Crack me up. Funny. I laugh about it. But very grateful. Still living. Bofill's contributions to music, with a career that spanned decades, will be remembered by fans around the world. Her voice, her spirit, and her legacy will live on in the timeless music she created. I don't think I ever really thought of it in terms of that. Like, I didn't go... And first of all, I don't know what the life is that I wanted. I don't know what I, you know, you want to be comfortable. Danny DeVito, born on November 17, 1944, in Neptune Township, New Jersey, is a beloved actor, director, and producer whose career has spanned over five decades. Raised in a working-class Italian-American family, DeVito grew up with two older sisters and experienced a typical childhood in Asbury Park, New Jersey. He attended Oratory Preparatory School, where he discovered his passion for acting. After graduating, DeVito moved to New York to attend the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. He graduated in 1966, ready to pursue his dreams in the world of theater and film, though the road to stardom would be far from easy. In his early career, DeVito struggled to find steady work, making his debut on the stage before transitioning to film in the 1970s. His breakthrough came when he was cast in the role of Martini in the 1975 film adaptation of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Although his role was small, the film's success helped put him on the map. It wasn't long before his big break in television arrived, and in 1978, DeVito landed the role that would make him a household name, Louis De Palma in the sitcom Taxi. His portrayal of the grumpy yet hilarious taxi dispatcher earned him widespread acclaim, including a Golden Globe Award and an Emmy, cementing his place as one of television's most talented comedic actors. While DeVito's television success in Taxi set the stage for his Hollywood career, he soon became known for his work in film as well. In the 1980s and 1990s, DeVito starred in a series of hits, including Ruthless People, 1986, Throw Mama from the Train, 1987, Twins, 1988, and Batman Returns, 1992, where he played the iconic villain, the Penguin. His combination of comedic timing, distinctive appearance, and larger-than-life personality made him a fan favorite. DeVito also ventured into directing and producing, with his directorial efforts including films like The War of the Roses, 1989, and Matilda, 1996, the latter of which has become a beloved family classic. As a producer, he helped bring projects like Pulp Fiction, 1994, and Aaron Brockovich, 2000, to life, proving his versatility and influence in Hollywood. Throughout his career, Danny DeVito has enjoyed remarkable success, but like many others, he has also faced his share of health challenges. Standing at just four feet, 10 inches tall, DeVito was diagnosed with multiple epiphyseal dysplasia also known as Fairbanks disease, a genetic disorder that affects bone growth. This condition is responsible for his short stature, and while it has never hindered his performance, it has played a role in shaping his career, giving him a unique physical presence that has become one of his defining traits. DeVito has been open about the condition, but rarely lets it define him, focusing instead on his talent and what he brings to each role. In terms of overall health, DeVito has generally kept a low profile, avoiding any major health scandals or long-term illnesses. However, in 2017, he experienced a health scare that raised concerns among fans. During the promotion of his Broadway show, The Price, DeVito collapsed on stage, sparking fears about his well-being. 
Fortunately, the incident was not serious, and DeVito was quick to assure the public that he had simply been dehydrated and fatigued due to a busy schedule. The actor made a swift recovery and returned to work shortly after, showing the same energy and enthusiasm that have defined his career for decades. Today, Danny DeVito is still very much active in the entertainment industry, continuing to captivate audiences with his unique brand of humor and talent. Since 2006, he has starred as Frank Reynolds in the long-running sitcom It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where he has become one of the show's most beloved characters. His willingness to take on bizarre and outlandish roles in the series has earned him praise and endeared him to a new generation of fans. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is currently one of the longest-running live-action sitcoms in American television history, a testament to DeVito's enduring appeal. In addition to his television work, DeVito continues to lend his voice to animated films, a medium that has allowed him to reach a broad audience. He voiced the title character in The Lorax, 2012, and more recently, he appeared in Disney's live-action adaptation of Dumbo, 2019 directed by Tim Burton, his longtime collaborator. DeVito's passion for storytelling remains strong, and his continued involvement in both acting and producing ensures that he remains a relevant and influential figure in Hollywood. Beyond his career, Danny DeVito is known for his activism and philanthropy. He has been involved in several charitable causes over the years, including environmental conservation and animal rights. DeVito's commitment to giving back is also reflected in his support for the Democratic Party, and he has been vocal about his political views, particularly in his support for progressive causes. At 79 years old, Danny DeVito shows no signs of slowing down. His career, which spans acting, directing, producing, and even voice work, is a testament to his incredible talent and versatility. Despite his age, DeVito continues to take on new projects and remains a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. His comedic genius, coupled with his dedication to his craft, has allowed him to maintain a lasting career that few actors can claim. In conclusion, Danny DeVito's journey from a young man in New Jersey to one of Hollywood's most iconic and beloved actors is a story of perseverance, talent, and passion. His ability to navigate the ups and downs of a long career while remaining relevant and impactful is a testament to his adaptability and skill. Today, he continues to work both in front of and behind the camera, inspiring audiences and proving that age is no barrier to success. Whether through his iconic roles, his voice work, or his continued involvement in television, Danny DeVito remains a true legend of Hollywood. Kathy Bates, a beloved actress, faced cancer head-on, experiencing the same anger and fear as so many others. She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and kept it private for years, but a second diagnosis of breast cancer pushed her to take control. Bates turned her anger into passion and has since worked to help others facing similar battles. As she stars in the upcoming film, Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. B. In the film, Bates plays the grandmother of an 11-year-old girl navigating puberty. She told people the movie is about embracing womanhood and helping young women feel better about their bodies, something she feels deeply about as a cancer survivor. Beyond the screen, Bates' own fight with cancer has been difficult. Diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2003, she described the news as life-altering. This type of cancer is often called a silent killer. Because symptoms are hard to detect early, making awareness critical for survival. 